Hi, my name is Tegan Feely and I'm a senior biology major here at Westminster College. Today I'm going to be talking about my thesis, which I'm completing under the mentorship of my PI at the University of Utah, Dr. Melody Weller, and my thesis advisor, Dr. Dave Parrott. As my senior project, I'm completing a review paper evaluating HCV-like reservoirs by gathering and comparing recently published findings of novel Delta viruses with hopes of expanding knowledge of the origin of the hepatitis Delta virus and potential upstream vectors of disease. Before I begin talking about my findings, I'm going to give an introduction to HCV and explain the importance of this to the field of HCV research. Then I'll talk about the future directions within this field as well as my findings. Hepatitis Delta virus, or HDV, is the most severe form of viral hepatitis. It was first discovered in HPV-infected patients by Mario Rosetto in 1977. HDV is a member of the genus Delta virus and is a very unique human pathogen due to its genomic and antigenomic ribozymes, which are essential for its replication. Although HDV can autonomously replicate, it requires an envelope protein of other helper viruses to produce infectious virons. It's commonly associated with the helper vi virus hepatitis B, which provides the envelope proteins required for HCV transmission between humans. HCV is sometimes referred to as the hidden epidemic. There are approximately 15 to 20 million people worldwide who are infected with HCV among the 350 million HPV carriers. Compared with mono-infection of HPV, co-infection of of two viruses accelerates pathogenic effects of the virus, such as fulminant hepatitis and progression to hepatocellular carcinoma through unknown mechanisms. There is also no current treatment for HIV beyond being vaccinated for hepatitis B. As seen in the current pandemic, it is important to understand the origin of these viruses for a number of reasons. But if researchers can better understand what the virus looked like before it jumped into the human population, they are in a better position to develop more efficient treatments and vaccines for this disease. Therefore, the origin of HIV and Delta virus is an important element for fighting this hidden epidemic. The evolutionary origin of HIV remains an enigma. It was speculated that HIV evolved in humans since Delta viruses were only sequenced in humans until very recently. However, in the last few years, there has been several discoveries of novel Delta viruses in both vertebrate and invertebrate species. The identification of similar Delta viruses in distantly related species other than the humans indicated that the previously suggested hypothesis on the origins of Delta viruses needs to be updated. It is still possible that the ancestor of Delta viruses emerged from cellular RNAs. However, it is likely that this would have happened much earlier in evolution than previously thought. Thus, these findings open up completely new avenues in evolution and the pathogenesis of studies of Delta viruses. My review paper is comparing the findings from Wiley, Chang, Petzl, Paraskivupulu, Iwamoto, and Bergner to examine any insights into relationships between Delta viruses and their helper viruses. To define what I mean by HTV like, these are non HTV Delta viruses which are only distantly related to HTV. They are thought to share the same origin due to their similar structured circular RNA genomes, which encode the DAG like proteins the ribozyme sequences, as well as them being highly self-complementary. These findings provide clues to the mechanism of Delta virus evolution. As mentioned earlier, this review paper serves to evaluate the various sequencing methodologies of the six novel Delta virus findings and assess any reservoir commonalities to help us better understand where these viruses are coming from. I am also looking at any evidence of replication to provide a better idea of how the disease travels through genomes. The paper is still underway and is planned to be completed by late April with hopes of publication with Dr. Weller later this summer. Therefore, today I'm just going to be going over my preliminary findings and what they could suggest. We wanted to examine different sequencing methods because in the growing world of technology, there are various ways to carry out metatranscriptome data analysis. Due to microbiome complexity, high throughput sequencing in the form of short read data usually generated from the luminous sequencing technology has been most often applied to these studies. Is particularly used when multiple samples and deep coverage are required, such as in differential gene expression studies. This is seen with all research groups, and they also seem to be using similar library preparation methods to produce these novel sequences. 
Most researchers found that the reservoirs of these HDV-like diseases showed no signs of disease except for the Hetzel research team, which was the only research group able to show evidence of viral replication. I'm also considering the biodistribution of samples for standardization. Another aspect of the paper is to examine potential reservoirs of these HDV-like viruses. Through this, I have been looking at the geographical spread of these vertebrate and invertebrate species, as well as the predominant diet of these reservoirs. While the, this is just preliminary analysis, it seems that the most common diet is omnivore and the reservoirs are found in predominantly arid climates between 30 and 60 degrees south of the equator. The final aspect of this paper is looking at any evidence of viral replication within these animal hosts. Replication indicates if sequences are able to go through the infectious process and target host cells. If so, then these HDV-like viruses could be transmissible. As of yet, only the Hetzel and Spiroca research team has been able to prove viral replication within the host. They successfully cloned the snake delta virus, or SDV, genome into mammalian expression plasmids. By transfection, they found that they could initiate SDV replication in cultured and snake and mammalian cell lines. Furthermore, by superinfecting persistently infected cells with these viruses or by transfecting their surface proteins, they could include production of infectious SDV particles. These findings indicate that delta viruses can likely use a multitude of helper viruses or even viral glycoproteins to form infectious particles. Furthermore, in a study just published in February of 2021, Iowa Modus research team was able to suggest that the specific delta viruses also initiated replication from the constructed plasmids in the cell culture system. This is very promising and hopefully more research teams are able to show more evidence of replication in the coming months. Beyond learning more of the origin of delta viruses, these findings may lead to the discovery of an upstream exposure vector of this disease, which I have been studying with Dr. Weller for the past two years. This is the future of HDV research and it's very promising that we'll soon know more about this very unique pathogen. While I'll definitely still have more research to carry out for this paper in the coming weeks, I hope to succinctly review all recent progress on the origin of the Delta viruses and add to this very exciting field. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about this. If you have any questions, my contact information is on the slide.